Hello and welcome to this service of worship from Solomon's United Church of Christ in McCongee, Pennsylvania for the weekend that includes October the 6th, 2024. You can always reach us at our website, solomonsucc.com. My name is Frank Schaefer, the pastor of Solomon's Church. Uh, coming to you on this weekend when we celebrate a communion service, World Communion, and you may want to join with me uh, online in the communion uh, if you believe that's appropriate to do so. Uh, you'll hear more about this near the end of the service. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth and in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Amen. Your steadfast love is before our eyes, O God. Help us move in faithfulness. When tests and trials come, when evil itself appears, we place our trust in you, O knower of joy and suffering. Help us move with integrity. Place us on level ground, O Redeemer. Move us to sing songs of thanksgiving and to proclaim your wondrous deeds. Let us pray. Gracious God, through whom all things exist, we are mindful this day of siblings in faith around the world. We rejoice in our oneness with them. We are mindful, too, of those near at hand and those far away, those who suffer from ills and calamities, from wars and disasters. Be present with them and us, we pray, even as you fix our hearts on you and how we might in faith respond to the needs of neighbors around the world. Amen. A hymn, our God to whom we turn when weary with illusion, whose stars serenely burn above this earth's confusion. Thine is the mighty plan, the steadfast order sure in which the world began, endures, and will endure. Please join me now in offering a prayer of confession. Let us pray. We are conscious this day, O God, of the world's great needs for love, for caring, for right relationships of all kinds. We are conscious, too, of the times we fall short, the small daily choices and the large systems in society that impede the loving world you envision. Save us from hypocrisy, we pray, and help us find the places your glory abides. Amen. The psalmist says, God made humanity but a little lower than the angels. We are, God knows, sometimes, not even close to angels at all. Yet God crowns us with glory and honor. In the name of that Jesus, the perfecter of our salvation, know that you are loved and forgiven. Amen. There's two scripture lessons. Uh, a key in on both of them, what they say about angels. Psalm 8, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, 
what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals, that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and created them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under your feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I realize, friends, that I goofed because in this translation of Psalm 8, it says we're made a little lower than God. Uh, and I like that. But the usual translation says we're made a little lower than the angels. And then from the letter to the Hebrews, parts of chapters 1 and 2. Long ago, God made, <laughs> long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now, God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that you are mindful of them and mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom, all things were made, in bringing many ch children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. In responding to the scriptures we have heard, redeem us, O God, be gracious unto us and to the world. In the great congregation, we will bless your holy, holy name. Amen. The title of today's message is simply, Jesus Superior to Angels. It's fascinating to me, as I understand it, and I may be wrong in this, how the early church, as reflected in some of the New Testament scripture, struggled with trying to understand fully what Jesus was and is all about. Because many of those earliest Christians grew up as people of Judaism, and like some other religions of those days, believed in one God 
and one God only. The God you and I might call God the Father. But then there is this Jesus who is from God and somehow a very part of God. And they struggle to explain this Jesus and how he fit in. And so sometimes you will find phrases that may sound strange to us, like in Hebrews, we hear that God appointed Jesus as heir, and that when Jesus had completed his suffering, he ascended to the throne as though Jesus had not been a part of God from the very beginning. Uh, I think sometimes what they may have been struggling with was to recognize that, yes, there was Jesus, God the Son, before the person of Jesus came to the earth for us two centuries ago, but what he was doing before maybe was a little unclear sometimes to the people, but they kept thinking about God and they knew the logic of it, that Jesus must be of the very essence of what some of us call God the Father. And this Jesus has been part of God since forever, as we also find out in some other writings in the New Testament, so is the Holy Spirit. But for us here today, it's important to simply keep in mind that whatever else there is in the universe, Jesus is by degrees more than anything else there is. In the ancient world, amongst the Jewish people and others, there was a belief in angels. Uh, some people today believe in angels. I have a friend who talks about their guardian angels and has several uh, that person believes. Uh, no argument here. But whatever else there is, including if there are angels who in the Old Testament we find ministering to God, uh, the archangel Michael, for example, and incidentally, the word archangel is not actually used in the Bible. I thought it was, but he's, he's considered one of the chief angels. But those angels, while they may somehow be connected to God in the ultimate universe and minister, if you will, to God, they are not God. And Jesus, our Savior, is superior to them and to everything else, including us. And so let us simply relish that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. Let us be glad, though it was a sad story, that Jesus was willing to come to earth where Jesus suffered and died on our behalf. And let us give thanks and praise to God that we are never alone, but that we are keyed in to the, to the Godhead and just a little lower than the angels. Amen. Today is a Neighbors in Need offering. This is an offering that Solomon's Church and many mainline Protestant church gathers every year, and it is used specifically to give assistance to people here in the United States of America. For example, with the flooding from Hurricane Helene, 
you can be sure that our denomination through these resources combined with other denominations has already been giving help to the people in this nation. Uh, if you are interested in making a contribution, you can always write a check or send it through your banking system to Solomon's S-O-L-O-M-O-N apostrophe S, United Church of Christ. And in the memo, put neighbors in need offering. And I can guarantee you Solomon's receives such funds from members and others, but does not retain one penny. All of it goes through the national church to help people around the United States of America. A prayer for blessing our gifts. As you have blessed us, gracious God, bless the gifts we return to you now. May our tithes and offerings bless your world with love and salt your world with peace. Amen. A hymn before the communion itself, I'm going to share three stanzas. The title is Great Spirit God, and it was written by a clergy who worked among Native Americans, if you will, in the central and north parts of the United States. And he wrote this song to kind of fit in with a traditional Native American tune. And I won't sing it for you, but if you can find online this hymn, look it up. To me, the, the melody is haunting. It sounds Native American, even though the words were not written by a Native American person, but someone who lived among them and got, I think in some ways, the spirit of Native American understanding of God. Great Spirit God, the things which are yours are numerous and great. The heavens above you set in their place, and earth received its form by your hands. The ocean depths respond to your will, for you can do all things. The fifth and sixth stanzas. Your sacrament entrusted to us, Jesus, now share with me. Your bread of life and drink for our souls, which you have offered, purify now. Sanctify minds and bodies to you. Restore us by your love. In quotes. Take now my flesh as food for your soul. End of quotes. These are your words, O Christ. Quote, Take my shed blood and drink from my cup, that it may serve to strengthen your faith. End of quote. Entrance into your door I desire. Jesus, now hear my plea. And we turn to the communion. God be with you. The Holy One is with us. May our hardened hearts be softened. We lift them up to the Holy One with thanksgiving and in hopeful expectation. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are holy and you make us holy. We declare glory and honor due to your precious name. Like generations before us, and the heavenly chorus beyond us, we cry, Holy, 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 God of power and might, all realms are filled with your glory. Redeem us, restore us, renew us. Blessed be your holy name. We join in remembrance of your incarnation. Your humble beginnings affirm that the strength of God is perfected in weakness. The years of obscurity left unrecorded and unknown to us remind us that good things benefit from preparation and patience. The record of your baptism reminds us of our own baptism as we entered the waters of life and community with you. 
recalling your ministry encourages us to engage in the work of healing, teaching, and presence. Revisiting your passion challenges us to expand our capacity to love generously, sacrificially, and relentlessly. Amen. The Words of Institution It was on the night of betrayal when Jesus enjoyed a meal with his community of faithful disciples, imperfect people committed to follow his way and circled that table. The one who would deny him was at the table. The one who would betray him was at the table. Many who would flee in fear of the risk to their own lives sat at that table. All were welcomed, all were known, all were loved. All were nourished as Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. For he offered the bread to the gathered, I'm sorry, as he offered the bread to the gathered, he declared, This is my body, take and eat in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and blessed it. As he offered the cup to the gathered, he declared, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Ministering in the name of Jesus, we offer bread and cup as we proclaim Christ lived, Christ died, Christ rose, and Christ lives again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive the gifts of God for the people of God. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Take and eat. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Take and drink. Let us pray. Communal God, we give you thanks that you have shared in life and death. You lead us into the resurrected life. At this table, we acknowledge your abiding presence among us. You offered us bread and cup, which we, see, we, which we receive in remembrance and expectation of your movement in human history. Form us as your faithful community and shape us as servants and stewards of your realm. By your Holy Spirit, may your covenant reign within our hearts and manifest in the witness of our lives now and forever. Amen. The benediction. <clears throat> may the Holy One be an ever-present companion as partner as you encounter the tests of life. May your softened heart break over the pains, pangs, and problems of the world. May the strength of the Holy Spirit fill you, the power of the Spirit embolden you, and the leading of the Spirit guide you as co-creators of the kingdom of God, now and forever. Go in abundant hope, peace, and love. Amen. And we conclude with 
a hymn and the refrain, Rejoice, O pure in heart, rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your festal banner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Friends, thank you for being a part of this service brought to you through Solomon's United Church of Christ on YouTube and Facebook. We'll see you next weekend, the weekend of October the 13th. As always, be safe, spread God's love. Bye for now.